Last year, the Dublin Racing Festival came along and changed the face of Irish National Hunt Racing. 12 months on, we're back here again. Eight grade ones across the weekend. Racing simply doesn't get better than this. Dublin has a brand new attraction, the Dublin Racing Festival. This is the most informative weekend we're ever going to have with regards to what's going to happen for the rest of the season. Racing up the line, it's footpad, the good winner of the Frank Ward Solicitor's Arkle. Sabine, out in front at the last. Racing up toes to finish, Super Sunday wins the Irish Champion Ireland. It's been impressive, wins it well. Ed Wolf and Derek O'Connor as they race up towards the line. Ed Wolf wins the Irish Gold Cup. They're all top class grade one races. Any horse that'll win any one of them will say he'll have enough done for the season. Yeah, you're very welcome along. A beautiful afternoon here in Leopardstown. And Katie and Ted alongside me for what will be a cracking weekend of raising. Ted, if you can't get excited about this, there's something wrong with you. Oh, you're better off in, in a graveyard. <laughs> so, you would, yeah. You're, 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 only, you're only cutting yourself that you're alive. Yeah. Because this is a great weekend. And all the top class horses are here. Other than Cheltenham, you couldn't ask for more. Anything that you want to see is here, with the exception maybe a presenting Percy. Yeah, and look, I mean, last year was a massive success. It was only the first year. I don't know, it feels like it's been around for years now, but it's a fixture in the calendar. It's here to stay. It's a great form guide, obviously, to Cheltenham ahead. But it stands on its own merits, Katie, doesn't it? Yeah, listen, absolutely. It's six weeks away to Cheltenham as well, you know, so it's perfect timing. And, uh, you know, it's one of the best tr tracks in the c country as well. Mm. Um, obviously, we'd love to see the likes of Percent and Percy, maybe Ken Boy, Charger, but we, we, we can't have it all. But it's yeah. t top class racing. No, it is. I mean, look, and let's talk about superstar mayor Apple's Jade. We were at Fairy House Ted when she was so impressive. She's back over two miles today in champion hurdle company. How do you think she's going to get on? I think she'll beat these. She's a winner of nine grade ones. She's only been beaten on a few occasions. She's won over two miles. It's very hard to see her, uh, to see any of them. I mean, Melon is a good horse. If he reproduces his run behind Bova there, he'll give her probably plenty to do. But that's the only run in his life that you could say he's up to this mare. He's won two races. She's won nine grade ones. She's won ten of her 13 runs. She's rock solid she jumps out she goes a good gallop she handles the track she's won around here man's horses are in great order very little not to like about her Katie oh you couldn't she's absolute star I think everyone's really looking forward to seeing her as well you know what I mean she's a, she's a fine strong mare you know she jumps and travels I thought she was very impressive here here the last day she, I, I know it was over two, three miles and she's dropping back to two but she's all the pace in the world as well and really looking forward to seeing her yeah she's one of many superstars here today one of our very own superstars is Tracy Piggott Oh yes, what a fantastic weekend of racing we've got for you coming up. It's going to be absolutely magical. Let's have a look at the menu for today. Yes, lots of races for you this afternoon. And we start at 12.50 in just a few minutes with this Nathaniel Lacey and Partners, Solicitor's Novice Hurdle, over two miles and six furlongs. And of course, that is a grade one. Then at 125, another grade one. It's the BHP Insurance Irish Champion Hurdle, over two miles. Then at 2 o'clock, the Ladbrokes Hurdle, over two miles. We follow that at 2.35 with the Matheson flat race and of course that's a grade two that's going to be a great race over two miles then at 310 the Labrooks Dublin chain a grade one over two miles and one furlong at 345 we sign off with the Frank Ward solicitors Arkle Novice chase over two miles one furlong another grade one for you now there's only one non-runner disappointingly that's in the 310 that's simply Ned sad that we're not going to see him and at 1250 get a reason it's now ridden by Brian Hayes Well, it's a bit more like the Antarctic than Leopardstown here today, but uh, the ground looks absolutely fantastic. It's probably been a bit of a nightmare, Lorcan. It's been a, 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 a difficult week, I suppose. We were dealing with uh, uh, last Monday a forecast that wasn't very, uh, you know, it wasn't really good, sub-zero and either rain, sleet or snow. But thankfully, uh, the, it didn't get down as low as we would have feared. So we're in good shape. Uh, going description, chase track is good. Hurl and bumper track, good to yielding fresh ground particularly on the hurl and bumper, uh, hurl and bumper track that is, it's a track we haven't used since this time last year okay so um, we're in good shape uh, forecast for tonight uh, in the early part of the night it's going to get low again and then from midnight on second half of night gradually uh, improving to temperatures 
less cold than today, up to six or eight degrees uh, tomorrow. So could be a few winter showers tomorrow morning. But uh, all being all, considering where we might have been as with the forecast last Monday, we're in good shape and uh, it's, it's great to be racing. Certainly is. It's going to be a great weekend. Thanks very much for that, Logan. Oh, yes, a warm good afternoon to you. Wherever you're watching RT Racing, two days of action-packed jump racing, 1.8 million euro, and make sure you're recording the action. This very festival, 12 months ago, we saw eight, yes, eight subsequent Cheltenham Festival winners of 2018. Eyes peeled, let's get action underway with race number one for the Dublin Racing Festival 2019. It's the Nathaniel Lacey and Partners, solicitors, 50,000 euro, Cheltenham bonus for stables, staff. Novice hurdle. It's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, the winner here, who goes on to win any race at the Cheltenham Festival, is a 50 grand bonus. 120 to the stable staff. 125,000 in total prize money. Number one is Chun Gare, the walk in the park gelding. Joseph O'Brien is the trainer. JJ Slevin, his first cousin, is the jockey. Paul Town and rise number two. Come to me for Willie Mullins. Three, Deffy Blah. Davy Russell for Gordon Elliott. Four, Darrell Spergy. Dennis O'Regan. Five, done vegan. Andrew Lynch for Pat Fahey. Six, first approach, cheek pieces, John Flanagan will steer. Seven, gallant, John Joe, the mount of Barry Brown. Eight, get a reason, no change of jockey, not Keith Dunahoo, Brian Hayes is aboard. Nine, Magnium, Robbie Power uh, rides that. The Westerner Gelding, ten, Rhinestone, Mark Walsh. Eleven, the big dog, you saw him winning on Paceless Chase Day for Peter Fahey. David Mullins again keeps the partnership 12 commander of fleet Jack Kennedy Rachel Blackmore she's aboard number 13 Ebrun Micha for Henry de Bromhead Malinus Jack and the Rob Core colours Brian Cooper rides the Malinus Gelly for Henry de Bromhead relegates the Flemish at Philly of course who won at this very meeting last year and at the Cheltenham Festival Ruby Walsh selects her number 15 uh, on your paper and number 16 Patrick Mullins is riding Salsaretta for his dad doing 11 stone 3 good field to get the Dublin Racing Festival underway at the present it's 4 to 1 favourite Renegades be here now yeah thanks very much indeed Brian as you can see the last flight has been omitted for the opening couple of races here the low lying sun I was down in the betting ring earlier on I had a look Katie and it did seem like that could be an issue it's right in the jockey's faces that are coming to that last yeah and you know it's um, the sun is quite strong it's it's uh, it's a lovely day here um, this is going to be a big change because at the back of the second last you're actually running now for two and a half furlongs on the flat okay. there's two furlongs at that bend when you turn turn in and that last furl is, hurdle is at the furlong pole you know it's going to be a long way to the line you know all about this horse relegate Katie 15 absolute star I was uh, she gets the mare's allowance uh, I was l lucky enough to win the mare's race on her here last last year and she went on to ch Ch Chetland then to win the champion bumper under a massive performance to come from off off the pace. She was unlucky in Punchestown the first day. She made amends back in A Square where she, she was good. Ruby p picks her so and uh, looking forward to it. Twelve was commander in fleet. He won the bumper at uh, the uh, sponsored bumper at Punchestown. A good performance that occasion. Then he didn't see him again till this year. He bolted in his maiden hurl at Punchestown. Looked good. Dropped back to two mile in the Royal Bond. It wasn't a great gallop, and he was stunned for toe. I'd see a bigger, better performance here today. So there we go. We're heading towards the opening race and the start, as you can see, all tightly bunched together. I've got to give a mention as well to Dunvegan for Pat Fahey. They think an awful lot of that horse, Ted, and he has to have a big chance here. Yeah, huge chance. Great leopard, travels well. Uh, it's a big plus for him. What about the big dog as well, Katie? He was just short here at uh, Christmas and then after that went and won. Uh, do you think he's he's the type of going over two miles six here? Um, he'll want to go real good gallop, but I think they are going to because looking at them down at the start, everyone looks fairly anxious to be on on the pace. Um, he's he's a lazy type. He's hanging on to loads. If you watch his ears, his ears are always flopping around. He hits the front, he doesn't do a tap. I want to bump around him in nace and he doesn't have to make you work for it. Okay, let's go to Richard and commentary. That's it. We are off and racing for the Dublin Racing Festival. The Nathaniel Lacey and partners sponsored Novice Hurdle. Here we go on the front towards flight number one and the first to rise in front towards the near side. Doros Piergi Magnium is prominent. Right up the big dog is up close to the pace towards the inside. Shun Guy is prominent and they're being followed by Dun Vegan right in there too. Towards the centre of the track is Gallant John Just Salsaret is just behind the pace. Deffy Blue is going up on the outside. Omron Mija is right up there too. They're tightly boxed as they go towards Flight number two, which is right across from the stands. Lost one there. Salsaretta's unshipped at flight two. 
Lost South Soretta, Patrick Mullins just looks set to get to his feet. Not just yet, though, as they continue down now towards flight three. Relegate towards the back would get a reason. There are a couple of links detached from the main body of the field. So they go out over flight number three. And Relegate was a little awkward over that one. As they now race into the bend, that's going to bring them across towards flight number four. Magnium has settled with the advantage. From Doral's Piergi racing in second, the big dog is third. And they're being followed in fourth spot just in behind as they go to race across the bottom of the track by Rhinestone is improving. Omron Mija is just in there too towards the inside Shun Gaia. Teffy Blue has just gone up into four there. Don Vegan's in the group. So they're racing out towards the flight which will be their last in a circuit's time. They won't be jumping the flight on the straight in this particular contest. Let's hope they can get it back in for the big one in half an hour's time. So now they race on a long, long run on the level before they meet another. And out in front it is Magnum and Robert Power who lead from Doros Pierre Dennis O'Regan aboard. They're being followed towards the inside by Shun Gaia and JJ Slevin in the first silk sub Jiggins Town House. The grey Don Vegan is just outside the big doggers and the sheepskin noseman winner recently at Gore on the Mount of David Mullins Deffy Blue is next towards the near side that's Davy Russell aboard the McManus Silks of Rhinestone and Mark Walsh are next then come to me and Paul Townend just tucked in behind this one towards the inside is first approach the Mount of Sean Flanagan and then over towards the near side of first approach on the outside of Gallant John Jones on Ron Mija and the yellow Jigginstown cap Malinus Jack is next under Brian Cooper they're being followed by Get a Reason in the bright green blinkers and last of all and not looking comfortable it has to be said is relegate her head is quite high her ears are back she's missed a flight or two and Ruby's trying to coax her rather than give her a full shove at this stage but if you were on her you'd have to be worried so now they make their way towards the two flights that bring them away from the stands they'll be coming off the ground again Magnium leads from in second spot Doros Piergi then Don Vegan towards the inside Shun Gaiam they're being followed by the big dog who's next next in behind these come to me Gallant John just in that group commander of fleet is just in that mid division group also so as they go towards the second one of two flights bringing them away from the stands Magnium leads them over as they are being followed by Doros Piergi then Dun Vegan they're being chased by the big dog and then comes Rhinestone is improving down the inside Shun Gaia come to me is next around the outside is Deffy Blue with Gallant Junja who's just shuffled out of a position there for a moment right in that group too commander of fleet behind them Omrin Mije they're being followed by Get A Reason there's a break opening up to the back marker which is the mayor relegates so into the back they go heading on towards the line of three flights ahead of them they've four and all left to be jumped and out in front it's Magnium who leads Doral's Piergi second the big dog is third and they're being chased down the inside by Don Vegan and Rhinestone commander of fleet's gone up into about six spot with Deffy Blue on the outside Shun Guy has lost a position on the inside come to me is just outside this one Gallant John Joe is in that group as they land over this one Malinus Jack is there too Omron Mija is widest of all then a couple of links to get a reason first approach has just shuffled back a couple of positions and relegate is now just latching onto the back of this one so now they go towards the flight over the far side three from the finish Magnium Doros Piergi the inside Don Vegan being followed on the outside by the big dog Commander of Fleet's gone up into a share of the four and they're being followed by Rhinestone again a bad mistake at the back by relegate and Omron Mija missed that one and misses back a number of positions as they continue down now towards what is their second last flight a lot of racing still to do Magnium Doros Piergi Dun Vegan Commander of Fleet Rhinestone the big dog is next in the white jacket and the slight mistake the leader over that one as they now race on the run towards what is their final flight what would normally be the second last here at Leperstown the sun but ensuring we bypass the last and Magnium still putting it up to them but Doros Piergi goes round the outside and they're being followed by Commander of Fleet and next up behind this one Rhinestone goes well now ridden along Dun Vegan and they're being followed by trying to pick up the big dog again and behind these Gallant John Joe has ridden trying to pick up from the back get a reason has made good ground Shun Gaia is next as they now make their way across towards their final one Doros Piergi lands a little awkwardly in front Commander Fleet's trying to come up on the outside Rhinestone's between them the trio being hunted down by Gallant John Joe Don Vegan has ridden the big dog has ridden get a reason from the back has ridden as they turn towards home they still have over two furlongs left to race and it's Rhinestone who's gone to the front from over on the near side Commander of Fleet Gallant John Joe is staying on they're being followed by Doros Piergi now they make their way on towards what would have been the final flight and Commander of Fleet with Rhinestone proving game the far side Gallant John Joe is directly staying on behind them but it's Rhinestone and Commander of Fleet who are in a battle Commander of Fleet Jack Kennedy Rhinestone the far side Mark Washter having a good old battle to get us started here but it's Commander of Fleet who's just about getting the upper hand up towards the line Commander of Fleet Rhinestone's rallying the far side Commander of Fleet 
speed is going to set the Dublin Racing Festival off to a flyer for Jiggenstown. Jack Kennedy and Gordon Elliott. He's back to winning ways. In second is Rhinestone. Tight third between, you won't believe it, Relegate stayed it on a little bit to challenge for that with Gallon John Joe at first approach and then came Get a Reason and they were being followed in further back by Doris Piergi who dropped out. The big dog was next in front of Deffy Blue, Dunvegan and they were followed in at the back by the long-time leader Magnium and the final one to go by is Omron. Mija, but the first one goes to Commander of Fleet, the son of fame and glory. First time he was beaten was last time, but he's back to winning ways. The winning ways in a big, a gutsy performance as well. Himself and Rhinestone got into a real good battle, and none of the two of them, only one horse won and the other horse was second, but they both ran crackers here. The white cap of Rhinestone on the inside, outside Commander and Fleet. It was nip and tuck every step of the way. Big long run there, two and a half furlongs. All relegate comes from the middle of nowhere uh, to be fourth or fifth. But this between the top two, Commander and Fleet, he won the punches down bumper, Katie. Rhinestone put it up to him every step of the way. It was a, a cracking race to watch. Yeah, it was. They went a real good true gallop every step of, of the way. The last hurl being out is a bit of a pity, to be honest, because you're racing on on the flat for the gust of three furlongs, the back and second last. But they went at it from the time they turned in and they battled to and fro the whole way up up the straight and, and Commander Fleets after coming out on top. Yeah, a good performance, Hugh. A good tough horse. Uh, he, as I said, he won that good bumper at punches down. It was mm -hmm. impressive when he's made in hurl. Just, I think, Ferry House is too short for him. Yeah, the last time we saw him was at Ferry House. He's had a couple of entries since then and was, was pulled out just before on both occasions. Obviously, they had this target in mind, but, I mean, you have to say, Mark gave uh, the runner-up at Rhinestone an absolute cracker ride as well, Katie. Yeah, an absolute cracker. <laughs> and listen, and you could run this race tomorrow and it could be a different result, you know. Yeah. Um, this horse actually won the Land Rover for Barry O'Neill. He's a former point-to-point -point winner as as well the style of the race the last day in Ferry House didn't suit it turned into a sprint and Ruby gave quick grab him a real good ride from the front as well but this this gallop suited ok let's Andy. go down Jack is with Andy Jack your first time setting up a successful partnership to begin yeah um, he done it well he jumped and travelled great throughout um, kind of took him a while to get into top gear and it's a long and lonely straight without the last hurdle there but to be fair to me, dug deep, he done it well. At Ferry House, it looked like the pace of the race didn't suit him, but today was a good gallop and he stayed all the way. Yeah, he did. Um, just stepping step him up to 2-6 to today, he was able to travel a bit more comfortably throughout the race, so it suited well. Rhinestone looked like he might have the measure you turned in, but uh, the two of them put in two good, tough performances, yeah. battled it out well. Yeah, they did. Um, this lad grinded it out well, like I said, it was a long and lonely straight without the last year he was kind of wandering a bit and with no rail to go by either but he done it well you'd think he'd be one to look forward to for the, the big novice festivals ahead for the spring he should be uh, hopefully he seems to be on the upward curve so uh, hopefully he can keep going that way well done Jack could be the start of a big day hopefully anyway thanks there was some gallop in it didn't they there was some out yeah, Gordon Elliott, a happy man, out as he likes to watch it out uh, in the middle of the track there. I mean, look, he'd be delighted for Commander Fleet here because it's a big one to win. Yeah, and the guy on the outside, well, Paul Nolan's in the middle there, but the guy on the extreme left is Simon McGonagall, who'd be a... Who'd be, he'd, Gordon even says they work together. Simon doesn't work for Gordon, that they work in upside. <laughs> so uh, great to see Simon out racing today. Yeah, and Jack judged it really well, Ted. Obviously, it would be great to see what would happen if they both had to jump that last flight. Cause... Yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. But they both jumped the second last well. Uh, Willie's horse had uh, Doris Perge looked to be travelling well. He jumped it on the inside, the second last. But everyone says, big long. I'll tell you what ran a super race. It was Oliver McKeeran's horse, Gallant John Joe, the yeah. big white face there. Like, he's rated 120 or so over hurls. He's run an absolute cracker. Oliver's always thought he was a, a good horse, and he showed it today. He ran a big race. But old mayor with the white cap back about six or seven. She didn't hardly jump a hurl all the way around give away acres and if the last hurl was there she wouldn't even have been as close as she was she hesitated about everything she did but a great battle between the two horses in front yeah, this is, Ruby's never never seemed happy, Katie, with Relegate out the back. I think from the time they jumped off, to be honest, you could kind of say he wasn't extremely happy where, where he wanted to be. She she got up so long with her head quite high, but actually the further she went, the more her head went down. Um, I dropped her out in Cheltenham as well. I mean, I took a chance because she's a filly that doesn't really like the intense hustle and bustle of races as well, but uh, she came from extremely off the pace in 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 Cheltenham but she didn't jump and Hugh you, you can't not do that so what about Commander Feed for, for Cheltenham then because they have battle over Diane as well Jiggenstown and he won very well at Nace the last day Ted over the same distance it'd be interesting to see if they run both in that Ballymore hurdle on the way well Wednesday. they have the Ballymore well the Ballymore hurdle and they also have the, the, the three mile hurdle yeah. so I'd say one will go one and one will go the other they both stay very well like this horse got two six here well battle of Boyne two five 
there's not a whole lot of difference between the two of them. They have plenty of ammunition, but what they have is, and what you'll be looking at for a long time to come, is a young man that's going to go to the top, a young trainer, and a bunch of young horses that are on the upward curve. We're going to see a lot of this for the next 20 years. Exactly. But you are, anyway. Katie. Myself and Katie, by the way. He's writing himself off already. He has himself in the coffin. Talking himself down. Look, they have that ammunition as well, going for Cheltenham, as you say. You know, the, the potato race, as they call it, the three mile hurdle. You also have the Ballymore. And this horse, he'd be right up there. I mean, if don't run a bad lover Diane had run as well, you'd, you'd have to say he'd have a stiff race today. Well, yeah. And you see what's going to happen in Cheltenham as well. They always go go gallop. They never not go go gallop in Cheltenham. It's always, you have to stay up the hill. You go real good true gallop every step of the way which is definitely going to suit this horse and what a, what a loss uh, fame and glory is uh, as a stud as well too he's only got a, a couple of crops on the ground there this is his first crop that we've seen and he's already come up with a great one winner over hurdles and uh, what a, he was a great race horse himself he's by Monju with a great damn line and out of Sadler's Hall mayor uh, but the fame and glory himself was unlucky to be born in the same area as Seed the Stars I mean the Seed the Stars wasn't around he beat him three or four times yeah. he was second to him on three occasions or four occasions I know he won an Irish derby and he won a lot of good races but if Seed the Stars wasn't around I think fame and glory would be standing below in Coolmore he was some uh, uh, loss to the jumping game because he puts the gorgeous looking horses loads of quality a lot of man due about him and uh, they jump and they stay the point the point lads love him the bumper lads love him they come to hand they're easy to train they're sound horses lovely horses I have to say I was disappointed to see Salzaretta fall um, when she did Katie I'm a big fan of hers I know she struggled with injury as well but I think Patrick quite fancied her today should we get the 7 pounds as well yes yeah, seven. obviously the mares get the 7 pounds allowance as well and you can be sure Patrick fancied her because he only gets 21 professional rides a year so, so he was wasting one today yeah so you can see him hitting the ground um, yeah you know it's it's a pity but sure it was extremely early, early on as well it's a pity she didn't stand up there's Gordon and uh, Eddie O'Leary Gordon Eddie can we get a picture of you well, say Eddie uh, buys these horses at the sales and uh, he's a, a good judge of an individual but he's more importantly he's a good judge of a racehorse we can all buy a good looking horse because a good looking horse is a good looking horse but he buys a lot of good racehorses just a word about Jack Kennedy Ruby said a little bit earlier this season that he's, he's turned into a right courier on the track Ted whereas this time last year he was a real gentleman he would have let you go past it this year the elbows were getting in he's, he's using the arms and everything he can to get, to get up and I win I wonder will, where will he, he learned that <laughs> will, will he say, he's a good man right now with him every morning Davy Russell if you want to know where your elbow is you can take your nose your ear so he's learning as he goes along but I, I, for the first time I ever saw Jack I think he's going in the right direction Tracy is down with Gordon Hardy yeah. fell himself yes I certainly am happy man great start to the weekend uh, well done Gordon Jack at this brilliant best what a performance yeah no it's great um, we knew he was a nice horse but big step when he was third and over hurdles we stepped him right up and trip um, he ran the Royal Band over too we knew he wanted further but uh He's a nice horse, horse for you. Lovely looking horse, yeah. isn't he? Loads of class. Yeah, he won the land over bumper, but uh, Jackson is still very green. Uh, with the, out in the middle of the track with no running rail, he, he's very green and ducking and diving, but uh, nice to get one on the board early. And he really put his head down now when he the did, question yeah. was asked. Ah, he's a nice horse, he's a nice horse, yeah. yeah. yeah lovely, now you've very busy weekend, I know, yeah. but obviously Apple's Jade. I can't believe you, didn't win, you haven't won the Irish hurdle, uh, the champion hurdle before, but uh, bringing her back and trip, everything good? Everything is good. She's in very good form. Obviously, it's a big worry going back to two miles. Um, but look, Tracy, the way it is, we've nothing to lose. She's a horse people to see racing and it's very important to have a horse like her here at the Dublin Racing Festival and um, there's no other race to suit her so uh, this is um, obviously Michael and Jake and Sounder, Eddie are, are very supporting they, they won't have runners and uh, we take our chance and if she's good enough to win she's good enough to win and if she's not we've nothing to lose and of course you've got Farkless as well and yeah, uh, you know so we're treating it yeah. Yeah, yeah and the other one as well but yeah. it's going to be a fantastic race and better let you go and saddle them up thanks, anyway sure. talk to these guys yeah, thanks, well done sure, well, Tracy, what a super start to the Dublin Racing Festival for Jiggins Town. Eddie O'Leary joins me now. Congratulations. What a horse this is. Only five, already a Land Rover bumper winner, already a grade one winner here. Sky's the limit? Well, he's a very nice young horse who travelled well, jumped well, and hopefully, hopefully stays safe. I thought the really pleasing aspect, certainly as a, a neutral bystander, Eddie, was to see that the further he goes, so simply that engine kicks in, the better he gets. Well, Jackson, he was getting lonely up... Look. Because, of, because, of, because the hurdle was omitted there in the middle of the track and he was getting lonely and a, and a bit idle in front but he's a nice young horse by a, a much missire obviously one of the bookmakers just pressed into the palm of my hand predictably a quote not for the Ballymore for the Albert Bartlett which way if you could give any indication might you be leaning towards at the festival at Cheltenham well hopefully he's okay tomorrow that's the main thing and if he is I, I'd imagine it'd be the three mile race great start well done thank you thank you thanks 
Yes, the Albert Bartlett, of course, for the son of fame and glory, has won the first of the eight grade ones here at the Dublin Racing Festival. Of course, Team O'Leary and Gordon Elliott have uh, lots to look forward to for Cheltenham. What price did he return at in the first race? It was a win for number 12, Commander of Fleet. It was a drifter on course from 9 to 2, 5 to 1, 11 to 2, 6 to 1, 13 to 2, Commander of Fleet. Second, Rhinestone, the Monjou uh, gelding was second for uh, Joseph O'Brien and Mark Walsh at 10 to 1. And third, number 7, Gallant John Joe at 33 to 1. Beaten favourite was Relegate, number 15 in your paper. She stayed on for a, a never dangerous uh, a fifth, of course. The, one of the big races, the BHB Insurance Irish Champion Hurdles. Six runners going to post the coast. A filly that needs no introduction. Apples Jade, hard to believe she's only seven years of age, bidding for her tenth 